So welcome to 3.1. We're going to do arithmetic with whole numbers, which are, as you recall, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And integers, which recall are the positive and negative whole numbers. So hopefully you're going to read through this and I will do the examples. Do these number lines a little bit again. And here is using a number line to add 3 plus 2 alpacas, which we can do, right? 3 plus 2 is 5, so there's 3 alpacas, add 2 more, and it should be a little smaller, <clears throat> and we get 5. Note that 2 plus 3 is also equals 5, so 3 plus 2 equals 5, and 2 plus 3 equals 5. We say that the operation of addition is commutative, meaning you can add numbers in any order and so the first example we'll do. Okay, so section 3.1 is long. I'm sure you've seen most of it before, but we're gonna explain it logically, okay? Not just memorizing stuff. So this is the first little cut. Here is two players playing golf, and I'm gonna add their scores up put them here at the end of nine holes. Now this just illustrates the power of addition. It's commutative. In other words, I do not have to add five plus six and then add five. I can jump around. Watch how I'm gonna do this. There's 10, there is 20, there is 30, there is 40, and finally, 45. For this one, I can add 6 and 4 first. That's 10. 5 and 5 is 10 more. 20, 30, 40, and 4. So the idea of this is that addition is commutative. Subtraction is not. In other words, 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. The order in which you add, which I just showed you up here, doesn't matter. But subtraction, 5 minus 3, is not the same thing as 3 minus 5. So it is not commutative. Example 3.3a, you spent $4 on a lottery tickets. So let's explain where that would be. If you started there, you would go into the negative numbers all the way to negative 4. So you spent $4 on a lottery ticket. <clears throat> One of the tickets was a $2 winner. What was your net spending on lottery tickets? So if you won $2, you're down 4, and then you won 2, so you would go this way, 2. So there's where you wind up, which would be a negative $2. You think of spending as a negative number. Now, is subtraction commutative? We've just discussed that, but it's 4 minus 2 is not the same thing as 2 minus 4. So the answer is no. So in this example, we're now going to be adding and subtracting integers. And here's our first little problem. And we're going to start at 0 and subtract 7. Think of it as $7, right? So you lose $7. And then you gain $2 back. So I'm going to go 1, 2. So when you put these together, you get negative $5. So here's one that sometimes confuses a lot of students. So you borrowed $3 on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from your sister. How much do you owe her? Well, I'm going to use red for negative numbers. So you start at zero, and on Tuesday you borrowed $3. On Wednesday you borrowed three more dollars. So you owe her $6. And on Wednesday, three more dollars, so nine dollars you owe her. 
you simply add up the negative numbers, like you add up your losses, like you add up how much you borrowed each time. This one here, when you see two negatives, it's subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So to see two negatives, you can just cross them out and put a positive. This would be $9. This is part of the same one, but I want to start with this one first. It says adding a negative number is equivalent to subtracting a positive number. So these two forms here, 3 plus a negative 2 and 3 minus 2, are identical. We usually think of it in terms of this because addition is commutative. So this is a good example of how you utilize that idea. So you can first add up all the positive numbers. So I have a positive 4, a positive 5, and I could change this. That is a positive 6. So I have 4, a 5, and a 6. So I have $15. And then you can add up all your losses, or all the negative numbers. So the only one here I have, well, a negative 3 and a negative 2. That is a negative 5. So if you have 15, you lose $5. This can be simplified to $10 positive. So this one here, we don't usually write it like this, but we think about it like this. Because this is adding together positive and negative numbers. You can write it like this here. And we usually do write it like this. So I'm just going to do this one here. I have my positive numbers or I have three dollars. That's my positives. That's the only positive I have. And then I have a negative two, negative two, negative two. So I lose six dollars and I have three dollars. Simplified, this is a negative three dollars. So these three little algebra problems sort of use the math that we just did with one little caveat. I think here you could say, well, I could either add three to both sides or divide by five. And normally we go in the reverse order of the order of operations. We go in reverse. So here multiplication comes first, so in reverse I would add 3 to each side first. <clears throat> That's easier. I could divide both sides by 5, but the problem is I have to then divide 3 by 5. So it's easier just to add 3 to both sides. And here is a number and its opposite, cancel, right, is 0. So I get 5x equals 33. Now I can divide both sides by 5. And it's either x equals 33 over 5, because these cancel, or x equals 6 and 3 fifths. So I have a double negative here, so I'm going to change that to a positive before I do anything. Now combining like terms or putting things together that are the same. So here I have 6 of those plus 5 is 41. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. They cancel and I get 6x equals 36. Divide both sides by 6 and I get x equals 6. So here I want to solve this for w. In order to do that, this 2l has got to go away. And this sort of, this using the same idea like we just did over here, a positive 5 and its opposite cancel to 0. So here I am going to subtract 2L from both sides.
Now I can subtract these, but I can't combine them. And finally, I can divide both sides by 2. And my final answer is W equals P minus 2L, that entire thing, divided by 2. Now, this is a kind of an important idea. Multiplication is nothing more than repeated addition. It's an important fact. So, here is an example using base 5. We had the number 423 base 5. So, you have 4 quarters, 2 nickels, and 3 pennies. So, there's your 4 quarters. There's your two nickels, and there's your three pennies. Now we put these on a number line. We get four quarters, which is a hundred cents. Two nickels, which is ten cents, and three pennies, which is three cents. You add those together, you get 113. So what if you had this? Yeah, adding 23 quarters would be bothersome to write out, right? You can see 23 quarters is a pain. But the way you can do this is you can multiply 23 times 25. Because all multiplication is is a shortcut for repeated addition. So let's do an example. So I'm going to multiply these numbers, these little expressions, using the distributive property. And you should have read about that in 3.6, and I'm going to do an example. Instead of multiplying 6 by 29, I'm going to multiply 6 by 30 minus 1. 30 minus 1 is the same as 29. And so the way I would do that, and I could do it in my head, 6 times 3 is 18, but 30 is 10 times bigger than 3, so it's 18 plus a 0, or 180. And then 6 times a negative 1 is a negative 6, so I'm left with 174. And I'll do it the long way, 6 times 29. You sort of do the same thing as this, but um, 6 times 9 is 54. 6 times 20 is 120. So you get 174. Really, use the distributive property when you just multiply. Now, 7 times 30 is the same as 7 times 3 which is 21, and then add a 0. <clears throat> so I really didn't use the distributive property here. 4 times 3x minus 5. Well, 4 times 3x is 12x, and 4 times a negative 5 is a negative 20. I cannot combine these because they're not like right? It's like cats and dogs. These are x's, these are not x's. I think this problem shows you how effective multiplication can be and how it really is nothing more than repeated addition. And these types of problems occur a lot. And we're actually doing, we're going to do a weighted average here. So I want to find the average. Company hired 15 new employees <clears throat> at the starting salaries listed below. Find the average wage per new employee by using repeated addition and then multiplication. Okay, now I can't just add these three numbers up and divide by three. And why is that? It's because eight employees started at $13 an hour, not one. So it has to be weighed. Now I could do this. I'm going to do it with addition. I can do 13 
eight times. Add 13 eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I could add 16 five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then I could add 20 two times. And then I can add those up and divide by how many I have, which is 15. Divide all that by 15. Now, a simpler way of doing it is just to go 8 times 13, which is 104, which is the same as 13 added together 8 times, and then 5 times 16, which is 80, which is the same as 16 added together five times, and then two times 20, which is 40, which is the same as 20 added together twice. So I get 224, and I'm divide that by how many I have, which is 15. So they're identical operations. It's just that one is addition, and one is multiplication. So I don't expect you to do that in your head. You can throw it on a calculator, and you will get 224 divided by 15, and you get 14.93. which is the average, the average. And you would expect it to be somewhere in here, 14.93, because over half the employees started at $13 an hour. So it's pulling the average. The average has to be between 13 and 20, but it's pulling it down towards 13 because there's so many people at 13. So you'll want to make sure you read 3.8 in the book. It's the same basic idea as what we just did, but it's calculating your grade point average. So I'll leave that for you to read. So here we're going to find the least common multiple of 4, 6, and 8 by listing the multiples. So for 4, it's 4 times 1 is 4, that's the first multiple, then 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, 4 times 5, 6, and 7. And the multiples of 6 would be 6, 12, 18, 24, 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 6, 36, 6 times 7, 42. And the multiples of 8 would be 8. Add another 8, right? I can use repeated addition. Add another 8. Add another 8. Add another 8. Add another 8. And add another 8. The least common multiple is the smallest multiple of each that's common to all. And so I think you can see it. It would be right here. 24 is the least common multiple. For what arithmetic operation is the least common multiple useful? And if you said fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, you would be correct. Right? Because 3 eighths plus 2 sixteenths, for example, cannot be added in this form. You would have to either change sixteenths to eighths or eighths to sixteenths. In some cases, you would have to change both of them. List all the factors of 24. <clears throat> well, I'm going to have 1 is a factor of all numbers. 2 is a factor. 
3 is a factor. 4 is a factor because 4 times 6 is 24. 5 is not a factor. 6 is a factor because 6 times 4 is 24. 7 is not, but 8 is. 9 is not. 10 is not. 11 is not. And finally, 12 because 12 times 2 is 24. So they are all the factors of 24. A prime number has only factors of itself in 1. 2 is the only even number that falls into that category. And then there's 5 because the only factors of 5 are 5 and 1. And 7 because 7 and 1 are the only two factors. 11, 13, and the list goes on forever. And those are prime numbers. So we're going to evaluate this expression here and write it as a multiplication problem. Now, hopefully, you know now that, right, you lose $3, lose $3, lose $3, lose $3. That is going to answer simplified as a negative 12. This is actually the same as a negative 3 plus a negative 3 plus a negative 3 plus a negative 3. That's the same as this, right? Which is a negative 12. Now, writing as a multiplication problem, I can say instead of adding negative 3 four times, I can say that's four times a negative 3, which is a negative 12. So it's always going to be the case that a positive, a, ne a positive times a negative is going to give you a negative. And if I flip it around, multiplication is commutative. The order doesn't matter. So that's also going to be a negative 12. So it follows logically. It's not a matter of memorizing a positive times a negative. It's a matter of understanding what exactly is going on here. So this is just thought question. Negative 1 squared means a negative 1 times a negative 1. And a negative times a negative is a positive. A negative 1 cubed means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1, but then a positive times a negative will give you a negative 1. So what's the pattern? The answer here is a negative 1, and the answer here is a positive 1. Raised to an even power, you're going to have pairs. Just, you won't have one left over, all pairs. Odd power, you'll have one left over. There's something about multiplication and division that is really different than addition and subtraction. And that's when we have to deal with the units. With addition and subtraction, if you have, and I'm going to just use these two things that we have, <clears throat> 20 pounds plus 4 feet. You cannot add or subtract them because the units are different. But with multiplication and division, the units get multiplied or divided just like the numbers. So I'm going to calculate the energy required to lift an object weighing 20 pounds a distance of 4 feet off the ground. So I'm going to have 20 pounds times... 4 feet, and I'm going to get 80 foot-pounds, which is just foot or feet times pounds. So in multiplication and division, the units get multiplied or divided, where it is an addition and subtraction, they do not. It's a huge difference. So we're going to multiply these two numbers together. And we're breaking this number, which, or let's look at this one. This is 4 times 10 squared, which is really 
100, so 4 times 100, that's the same as 400. And this number here is 3 times 1,000. So that's 3,000. So this will give you the pattern, right? You don't have to break it like this every time, but <clears throat> this will give you the pattern. So multiplication is commutative. The order in which we multiply does not change the product. We can switch the order without changing the result. So this, which is really just this here, is the same as three times four times 10 cubed times 10 squared. And I'm gonna break these up. So it's really the same as 3 times 4, which is 12, times 2 tens, which is here, and 3 more tens. So this is 12 times 10 is 12, 120. And then another 10 shifts it and adds another 0. So I'm going to get 12 shift it right, on our table, five times, which is just simply this. Count from here, one, two, three, count from here, one, two, three. So that is how it's all broken up. But an easy way of doing it is just go four times five is 20. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And actually, it's easier to do it this way than putting it in your calculator. Each time you multiply by 10, the entire number is shipped at one decimal place to the right, one place to the left, I mean. So if you recall, 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, our place value system, if I have the number 10, and I multiply it by 10, I shift it one place to the left, and it becomes 100. And that's all that's going on here. The shortcut for multiplying this is you multiply 5 times the 4, and then you just add zeros. So that would be 5 times 4 is 20, add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. That would be two million. Okay, so I'm going to divide 30 apples among five people and give the answer with units. <clears throat> so this is 30 apples divided by five people. 30 divided by 5 is 6. But the question is 6 what? And when you have something like this, you still have these units. They don't go away. And you divide the units just like we multiplied them before. So you have 6 apples per 1 person. So there is the answer with the units. 30 apples divided by 5 people is the same thing as 6 apples per person. So it's good to look at 314 before I do 314A. <clears throat> and what we're going to do in 314A is go through and show you why it must be that a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive, and uh, division and multiplication have the same, same applicable rules. In other words, a positive times a negative in multiplication and a positive times a negative in division both equal a negative. The result will be a negative. But we're going to go through this. This is not something, this table is not something to memorize. It's something to understand. And so hopefully we'll be able to understand it. 
moving to 314A. So this is 3.14A, and we circle the facts here that we learned from 3.14. But we're going to re-verify that these things are true using these two examples down here. So a lot of times students would memorize these tables, but it's really not necessary because we're going to explain why these, this must be, okay? So we're going to start with 2 plus 2 plus 2 as multiplication. So we know that that 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, and we can write this as multiplication as 3 times 2, which is also 6. So this shows, this will always be, that a positive times a positive number is a positive number, which is here. And the fact families that go with this fact is 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, which also verifies that in division, a positive divi divided by a positive is a positive. Okay, so now let's look at our second example. And what we have here is negative six, negative six, negative six, negative six. So if you lose six dollars on four different occasions, you're gonna lose twenty-four dollars. And another way of writing this is four times a negative six which must be a negative 24. So here we have a positive number times a negative number giving us a negative number, which must always be, because when you add together negative numbers, you always get a negative number. So that verifies that a positive times a negative is a negative. And it also verifies that a negative times a positive is a negative because the order in which you multiply does not matter. So that verifies this fact here. So let's erase that and look at the fact families that come from there. So this is, we know is true, so the fact is that 20, negative 24 divided by 4 must equal a negative 6. So that verifies the fact that a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So we only have three more things to look at, or actually we only have two more. A positive divided by a negative is a negative, and a negative divided times and negative is a positive, just from the fact family and from these two examples. Actually, there's one more fact we can verify. We can verify this fact here using this example. So if we have 24 to negative 24 divided by 4 is a negative 6. We also have another fact in here, which is a negative 24 divided by a negative 6 must equal 4. And so that verifies this fact. So we are now just left with these two. So these are the two facts that we need to verify. A positive divided by a negative is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So let's start with 24 divided by negative 6 and assume that the quotient is 4. In other words, we're going to say, we believe this to be true. But this leads to a product because now we have two fact families, right? We have 4 times negative 6. Now, must equal 24, a positive 24, because of what we're assuming. 
which is a contradiction. It's not possible for a negative times a positive to equal a positive. Therefore, the statement 24 divided by negative 6 equals 4 is simply false. Therefore, 24 divided by negative 6 is a negative 4. So this verifies that a positive divided by a negative is a negative. In order for this to be true, negative 6 times 4, this is the same thing as negative 6, negative 6, negative 6, negative 6, and we know for a fact that that's a negative 24. <clears throat> so now we have 24 divided by negative 6, we know it equals negative 4. So the fact family there would be negative 4 times negative 6 must equal 24 because of this. So it verifies that a negative times a negative is a positive. So there's our entire table. So we're going to look at <clears throat> dividing numbers that have powers of 10 in them. And why this is a whole lot easier just to do it in your head. <clears throat> we'll break it down, but then we'll just do this one. You can simply cancel two zeros in the numerator and the denominator. So in other words, You can go like this. 40 divided by 2 is 20. But why is that? I'm just going to explain it. <clears throat> so you have 4,000 divided by 200 is the same as 4 times 10 to the third. And 200 is the same as 2 times 10 squared. Broken down even further, this is 4 times 10 times 10 times 10. And this one here is 2 times 10 times 10. Now, 4 divided by 2 <coughs> is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. <coughs> and finally, 2 times 10 is 20. And <coughs> this problem here. Forty-five divided by five is nine. One of these cancel, and you're left with ninety. So I'm going to take a look at three one six, which is in your reading portion, and just for clarification. So we're looking at the order of operations. In math, we do things according to the order of operations, which is here which you're familiar with, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's a mnemonic for how you perform operations in math. Parentheses first and then exponents. And multiply and divide are tied. That's actually pretty important. Don't have to do multiplication before division just because my dear fits an easy way to memorize. So that means you can perform either one first. So unlike reading, we perform from left to right. We don't perform from left to right. We perform in the order of operations. So let's look at this. We had $10 before we purchased four candy bars for $1.50 each. How much of the $10 do you have left after the purchase? So translating that into a mathematical expression, we get $10 minus 4 times $1.50. So... If we were doing it like reading, we would go 10 minus 4 is 6. 6 times $1.50 is 9, which is not correct. 
what you have to do first is multiply 4 times the dollar 50 and you get 6 and then do 10 minus 6 because multiplication comes before subtraction. And here's a couple other examples that you probably should go over. A big one being things like this. <clears throat> And it's really, it's actually spelled out really clearly here. 8 plus 4 divided by 4 is 12 divided by 4, which is 4. 8 plus 4 over 4 is 9. You cannot cancel these 4s in division. They're not factors. 4 is not a factor in the numerator. <clears throat> it's being added. This is actually an Excel problem that you have for Chapter 3. Young's Rule of Medicine, it says the dose of a drug for a child is obtained by multiplying the adult dose by the child's age and years. So I'm going to say the adult dose times the child's age and years. And dividing the result it means Whatever this is, I want to do that first. And dividing the result by the child's age plus 12. These parentheses are really important. So determine the child's dosage if, what the, if the adult dosage is 50 milligrams and the child's age is 8 years old. So I'm going to determine this. So I have the adult dose is 50 milligrams. Child's age is 8. I'm going to put that in parentheses and divide it by the child's age, <clears throat> which is 8 plus 12. So here I get 5 times 8 is 4. D plus a zero, so I get 400, divided by 20. And you know how to do this now, right? 4 divided by 2 with an extra zero. So the child would get 20 milligrams of the same medicine that an adult gets 50 milligrams for, an 8-year-old would. So here I'm going to place parentheses in the correct place to make the statement true. Well, if I just left it alone here, just to evaluate it, it certainly doesn't equal 15 because this would be 9 minus 6, which would actually be 3. So how can I make this equal to 15 by putting parentheses in? Well, you can only put them in so many places. Let me try putting them here. And I, then I get, this I do first. So I get 3 plus 4 times 3, which is 15. <clears throat> so that's the correct place to put them. Now, why don't you pause and try this one on your own? <clears throat> And that's 5 raised to the second power. <clears throat> if I just do this one as it is, it's going to be 4 times 25, 100, minus 10 is 90, plus 2 is 92. So without parentheses, the answer would be 92. And I'm kind of like just fishing here too, but I'm going to just do that first because it makes sense to me. So now I have to do parentheses first. 25 minus 10 is 15. 4 times 15 is 60, plus 2 is 62. So that's the correct place to put the parentheses. Now these, this one and this one, this one here, and this one here kind of look the same, right? 6 plus 2 divided by 1 plus 2. 6 plus 2 divided by 1 plus 2. But they're completely different. When you have this 
symbol here, that fraction bar, it means something very special. It means do everything in the numerator first, and then do everything in the denominator, and lastly, divide. That's why we use a fraction bar. So the answer here would be 2 and 2 thirds. Now here, there's no parentheses, there's no fraction bar, so you divide first. So you get 2 divided by 1 is 2, 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. So they look the same, but they're not. This fraction bar is important. Now you don't have a fraction bar in Excel or on a calculator, so you have to mimic this here, and the way you do it is like this. Parentheses, parentheses. Now this is the same as this. So this one, what do you do first? We can either divide or multiply. So let's do 6 plus 3 minus 8. And 11 minus 8 is 3. So you just got to play with these a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one a little bit, and this one, I'll give you a hint. Question four in the homework. So the answer here is 396. I want you to be able to get that in your head. And the answer here is 130. And I did that just now in my head. So this is how I did this one. I took 4 times 100 minus 1 instead of 4 times 99. So 4 times 100 is 400. 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4, so that's 396. So that's how you write it out, but try to do it in your head. This one I broke up into this. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one a little bit, and this one, I'll give you a hint. Question 4 in the homework. So the answer here is 396. I want you to be able to get that in your head. And the answer here is 130. And I did that just now in my head. So this is how I did this one. I took 4 times 100 minus 1 instead of 4 times 99. So 4 times 100 is 400. 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4, so that's 396. So that's how you write it out, but try to do it in your head. This one I broke up into this. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one a little bit, and this one, I'll give you a hint. Question 4 in the homework. So the answer here is 396. I want you to be able to get that in your head. And the answer here is 130. And I did that just now in my head. So this is how I did this one. I took 4 times 100 minus 1 instead of 4 times 99. So 4 times 100 is 400. 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4, so that's 396. So that's how you write it out, but try to do it in your head. This one I broke up into this. So problem 5 is just using our numeracy skills on an algebra problem. So you can't take 2x and add 12x because this is being multiplied. So I'm going to use the distributive property. So I did that here. Now I'm going to combine things that I can combine over here. I can't combine a negative 10x and 30, because they don't have the same unit, right? 
but I combine these two. And now I'll leave it for you. <clears throat> Should the final answer, see if you can get it, is that. Same thing here, this one's a little simpler, right? This one's not too hard, but it drives home a crucial point, right? You drive 100 miles on four gallons of gasoline. Answer the following. Can you add 100 miles and four gallons? Well, can you do this? Well... You can't put them together because they have different units and you can't add or subtract anything with different units. The only thing you can say about that is that it's equal to this. So it really doesn't serve any purpose. Can you subtract it? Well, addition and subtracting are inverse operations. And the only thing you can say about 100 miles minus 4 gallons is that it equals 100 miles minus 4 gallons. Can you multiply it? No. Well, hopefully you know that we can multiply units. That's gallons. And you're going to get 400 miles times gallons. So I can multiply it. Well, what do I get? And it's called nonsense. <laughs> but this is, it doesn't mean anything. What does it mean? I have no idea. So can we divide four gallons by 100 miles? Four gallons divided by 100 miles. And this is just a fraction I can reduce to 1 over 25, right? So 1 gallon, 25 miles. Does that make any sense? Sure. It means I will use, it takes 1 gallon to go 25 miles. You can look at it that way. And the last one is 100 miles. For four gallons. And that will reduce to 25 miles for one gallon. Does that make sense? Sure. You get 25 miles per gallon if you drive 100 miles on four gallons of gasoline. So this is just explaining that with different units Right? You have different units. You really can't add them. You really can't subtract them. But you can multiply and divide them. Sometimes when you do it, it makes no sense like this. And sometimes it will. Mm -hmm.